Watch Mr. Wizard. That's what all the kids in the neighborhood call him because he shows them the magic and mystery of science in everyday living. Hi, Phil. Come on in. Thank you, Mr. Hi. Thank you, lunch. You want it in? Sauerkraut. Yeah. Or not lunch, either. Um, I'm glad not. Well, but we are going to use the energy from the sauerkraut. But, but what you say we weren't going to eat it? Well, no, we're not. We're going to run a motor on it. Sauerkraut? Yeah. You may not realize it, but we can run a motor on the energy in sauerkraut. Because today we're going to investigate, uh, well, maybe I shouldn't quite tell you yet, because that'll give you a clue as to how I'm going to run the motor. So let's start over here with a sort of a question. I have some metals over here. Uh, some of them in common, others not so common. And uh, we're going to, here, you want to stay right over there, because you see, uh, here's a little strip of metal, a little tiny thin strip. Is that metal? It looks like. Okay, would you... Uh, put it here into this uh, liquid. Whoa. What's happening? <laughs> See what it says on the front of that liquid? Oh, so pure acid, no yeah. wonder. So it's eating up the metal. Yes. In other words, what I wanted to show you here was that when you put some kind of metals into sulfuric... Look out, don't get too close to it because if there's some of that should spatter yeah. up, you know, it wouldn't be too good to get on your face. Uh, when you put some of these metals in with sulfuric acid, there's a strong chemical reaction that takes place. When you put two things together, oh, you mean like, like a metal this, and this. Melt it up. Uh, here's a different kind. Copper. Copper. Here, you want to put that in there? Carefully, sir. Nothing happens. Can't see anything. I guess it. Okay, now a because kind. because this is sulfuric acid, every time we take out the metal, we ought to put it down here in the water. And wash it off and dilute it, you see, so you don't get it on our hands. Okay, now magnesium bubbled away. Copper, nothing happened to it. Was that what it was, magnesium? Yes, that was magnesium. See, see, what I did, uh, you can't ordinarily get magnesium except at a scientific supply house, but I wanted to take it because it's so active when you put it in with the acid. And I have other metals here, you see, sort of fairly common ones, and I want you to see if you can guess what order you would line them up if you were going to guess something about their activity, their chemical activity now. Oh, well, Magnesium, we know, is quite active, isn't it? The highest, and, and copper is the lowest. Is the lowest over here. Now, between zinc and iron, what would you say? I don't know. I guess we could test it like this. Though. That's right. Let's test it. Well, would you want to keep this in this order before you do that? Or? Um, I guess so. You'll okay, keep that order. In other words, what would happen now if we took this one and this one, just as we did before, but put them in together? Oh, it would be like a battery. That's right. It would be like a battery. So let's try that. Here's the copper. Let's put that in here on this side. And here is a wire coming from this meter. And I can connect it to the copper like this. You don't have to worry because it's touching in the back. So, mm -hmm. Okay, so it's touching on the label there. Now, of course, this is a piece of cardboard. This is not mag real magnesium because the only magnesium I've got a hold of, it's extremely expensive, is a, is a, a uh, sort of um, well, like wire. So I wound the wire all up so that you could hold it over there in that clip. Oh, that, that one over there. And you hold it down in here into the, that uh, acid. And then we should be able to see here on the meter. Now, what we're going to read is the bottom. See where it says zero, one, two, three? Those are volts. So when you put it in there, we'll be able to read the voltage or the amount of current that's generated because there is a active metal here. We should really go. Okay, let's try it. Whoa. 1.9, uh, about, or 8. Mm. See, it's up to here. It's almost 2. Almost 2, about 1.8. Oh, we're going to get to Yeah, look, look what happens to the magnesium. Can Gone. Just drop it in? Well, uh, no, because then you won't have a current. Give it to me, and, I, and I'll put it in the water here, because that's uh, a little acid. I, I think I know what it is. We studied something like this in what? school, because as the active metal disintegrates, the electrons collect, and the electrons form the... Flow, flow through the wire and yes. go over here to the copper. Okay, now the copper is being acted on too, but not nearly as much. Mm -hmm. So we have found that the difference in, in the activity between one and the other electrically so is 1.9 volts. Mm -hmm. So I'll put that down here. If we put magnesium and, um, what do we have? Copper. copper. 
we get 1.9 volts. Now, what do you suggest we do in view of the fact that the magnesium is all eaten up? Maybe we'll leave the copper in there and try these. All right, let's start with iron. Start with iron. In this case, put the iron over here. Do you expect that the iron now is going to be above 1.9 volts or below? Oh, below Why? Think. Well, because uh, I just it won't don't bubble. Think it isn't you don't think it'll bubble as much? Well, let's try it one. Oh, about 0.4. Yeah, I touched that. About 0.4. About 0.4. That's a difference. Okay, yeah, dip, be sure and put that in there. Okay, now if we put um, iron plus copper is 0.4. Well, I'm not saying anything until I test this out. Okay. Then I'm going to be definite. I'll um, put this. Here's the mag our cardboard strip with the magnesium on it. I have zinc left. Now, what do you think there's going to be, above iron or below iron or above magnesium or where? I'm just not saying anything. Oh, you're going to be scientific. I'll I see. Scientific. Do it first and then. I'll also be safe. Yeah. Point, uh, Seven, nine. five, maybe eight. Point eight? Point eight. So if I touch yeah, if you touch the two. I think about point eight. It dropped a little bit. Okay. So, now I point think eight. I can get them in an order. Okay, wait a minute now. That was okay. zinc plus copper is point eight. Now, let's see. Wait a minute. Let me get the copper out of here. And you can line them up the way you think. Okay. First the magnesium on this side. First the magnesium. And the zinc next to it, then mm -hmm. the iron, and the Oh, then the copper. Okay. That's their order. Now, I wrote down the way the scientists uh, have, dis uh, have decided. Is that the same? I guess we're pretty scientific. Okay. It is. So you and the scientists agree. <laughs> okay. Let's keep this now because we want to refer to it once in a while. Okay. Now, what is the point of why should we worry about which metal is most active? What's this got to do with, uh, you said something about a battery you studied in school. Well, it's uh, the opposite ends. I mean, the, the, you'll get a current from it. The in more other words, current if we get. wanted to make a battery, according to our findings here, the best thing to use would be what? Magnesium and copper. Magnesium and copper. Well, do they make mag batteries out of magnesium and copper? No, they don't. Well, why not? Sounds like you'd get uh, 1.4 volts. No, I've never heard of one. More than twice as much as anything else up there. Well, maybe I can show you why. Here. Here's a strip of that uh, magnesium again. Oh, I see why. Uh, the battery wouldn't last long. Well, at least not with sulfuric acid, maybe with some other things. And there are some other reasons, too, why they don't use it. It's uh, rather expensive. Gee, yeah, it burned... Uh, and in this case, it's quite active. However, the activity wouldn't bother so much as the fact that it perhaps is also expensive. So what do they use? What copper it, and zinc. Copper and zinc they make batteries out of. In fact, we will, and we'll run a little motor. Mm -hmm. You and I are going to make one. Actually, what do dry cells have in them? Yeah. Carbon, not carbon. Carbon. That's down here. It's, it's very inactive. It doesn't it's act at all. It's even lower than copper. And, yes, it's even lower than copper and zinc. So if you want a supply of zinc, you can get it from here. How about some of the other metals? Do you know where aluminum would come and some of the others that are common around the house? Tin and so forth? Yeah, I don't know. Aluminum. Aluminum is quite active, actually. It, it is. So well, we well go between zinc and magnesium. Well, let's now take the, the ones that are as far apart as we can get, zinc and copper, and actually make a battery and run a motor. Are you ready? Okay, here is here it is over here. Um, here are two strips of metal. Can you guess which is which? Top one is zinc. This one is copper. Copper color. Because you, you can know, tell by, you know, by the color. The color. Okay. You notice I have them pounded into a piece of wood to hold them apart. So that I put them over here into that solution. See what it is? Sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid. acid. Diluted four to one. Oh, four parts water? Mm -hmm. Now, you want to come out over here and connect these leads over there. Uh, because when you connect the leads and, and get the current to go, follow the leads over there and see where they go. Look up to the, yeah, to the back a, of this Yeah, to the back thing and these, and here's a little toy motor. Oh, which is connected in turn <laughs> to, to, to that, this thing. To that big thing. So when that goes around, we know that we, uh, we have a current. Okay, you ready? Okay. Now, what do you have to do? Put it in. That's okay, okay, put it in. Hmm. Now what? Well, now, first of all, check to see if there's a chemical reaction going on. Do you see anything, any indication of any kind of activity? Yes, I do. I see, see the little bubbles. Little bubbles there. But then how come this thing isn't working? Well, now, there could be several reasons now. First of all, in order for this reaction to take place, you must have nice pure zinc. If, if the sulfuric acid is going to work with zinc, it's got to work with zinc. It can't work with dirt, fingerprints, oil. You know, and all that stuff that could be on but the outside. Yes, yeah, so that and uh, so that you should clean it off. Then the second thing, 
as the reaction begins, the sulfuric acid begins to attack the zinc and chemically changes some of the zinc to some other materials, and some of those other materials are deposited right on the zinc to prevent the sulfuric acid from reacting with it. Well, does that mean that it can't get to it? It can't get to it, yeah. And that's called polarization. Well, in, in dry cells, they have chemicals in there that prevent this from happening. Let's put a chemical in there and see if it makes a difference. Now, when you take this out, be very careful to put it in the glass and don't drip it, because that's that sulfuric acid. And here's... Well, that's a stirring wise. You're going to need that in a minute. You see, here's what we're going to put in. Potassium permanganate? Potassium permanganate, yes. Yeah. It's a purpley sort of dye that is sometimes used for athletes for things like that because it is a um, oxidizer. It has some oxygen available. Mm -hmm. When you put it into a, a solution like this, it helps get rid of it chemically to get rid of that. Um, wow, what a color! Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. Okay, now there's that glass stirring right there. You stir it up. It takes a while to dissolve. Now, when these uh, chemicals that get on the surface of the zinc uh, form, why well, this stuff will get rid of it. It'll change. No, it, it won't. Uh, it should keep on working. Should keep on it working. Should. Stir it up good, but be careful you don't splatter. Remember that sulfuric oh, yeah. acid. Yeah. What, what happens if I did get some? Well, I, I would wash it off right away so that it wouldn't burn you. But if you left it on there too long, it would. Uh, Is that burn you. Well, you try it. Now be careful of this thing. Okay. Okay. You take the battery out or the plates. You should. Have Give it a little start. Give it a little start. Go the other way now. Hold it. I don't twist it too much. Now it takes a while sometimes for the. Wait a minute. This is touching. It takes a while for the uh, the depolarizer to work because it takes a while to dissolve. Let me let me stir it around. Well, what would happen if we had uh, wrong metals to concentrate? Well, that, then it wouldn't work as well. Would it? Yeah, you can see some reaction. Here, would you stir it up again? Okay. I'm going to put just a little more sulfuric acid to make it go a little higher. What would happen if these clips were those? Wouldn't that... No, the motor would go the opposite direction. Now, careful. Put it back up so that you don't spread on it. Well, I don't know. The scientists always have problems, it seems. Well, I'll tell you, the reason why they do is because you're dealing with things over which you have no control. You either follow the rules the way the way the chemicals react, or they don't work. And when they don't work, there's some good reason why they don't. Well, it might even take a while. I mean, you can't give them a spanking and send them to the room, you know. you got to <laughs> fix it. Now. There she goes. Oops. Oh, it, I, what did it have to do? Eat away? I think oh, probably it has. Well, it's really going Well, that's because yeah. the depolarizer is gradually working, I think. It's really going now. Yeah, good. Okay. <laughs> so there we made a motor. Now, how did our made, made a motor? Made a battery. How were we able to make it? What was the secret of, of, the, of the ingredient? Well, we needed two different metals, an inactive and an active one. Right. And then we needed, In which case we use what? Uh, copper. Copper and, and zinc. zinc. Okay. And but another important thing, we needed a uh, an acid down the bottom. Well, we needed a chemically active material. We didn't necessarily need an acid, as you'll see. Uh, in this case, we used sulfuric acid. And what was that the purple powder? Potassium permanganate. Yes, a depolarizer. Okay. This thing is going away. Yeah, so. well, well, let's just let it run. See how long it goes. Okay. Okay. We'll check it after a while. Now, why wouldn't it be fun to do this at home? You mean uh, to be able to collect some materials and actually make yeah, a, a battery and uh, run things. motors and things? What's the matter? Something's wrong though. Well, what, well, what do you need? Most part, I don't have any sulfuric acid. Yeah. I don't have any copper. I don't have any zinc. Yeah. And you have a little motor? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the only you, thing you I have. Get motor those, and wood. That's the hobby shop. Yeah. All right. Well, um, let's see if we can't now design some um, uh, experiments that you can do at home with things that are right around the house. Mine with me. Okay. First of all, <coughs> You have, um, you say you don't have zinc and you don't have uh, copper. No. If you go to a hobby shop where they make jewelry making materials, you'll find strips of copper like this. They're called bracelet blanks. Because they're made, you know, you can bend them around and hammer into them and people use oh, them for I, hobbies. Yeah. So that's very easy to get there. Uh, very inexpensive. Seven cents a piece or something. You can get copper? that. That's copper. Oh. You can also get it at the hardware store or a sheet metal shop. 
Have you got a dry cell at home? Sure. An old board, one that's no good? Yes. Well, if you just take the, the outside casing off and take all the junk out in the middle, there's a perfectly good piece of zinc. zinc. Yes. You got a habit. So you have you have copper. Oh, wait a minute. And you can get zinc. Acid. You don't have sulfuric acid. All right? Watch this. You put that up there and put the clip the clips on it. I'll put this one on like this, like we did before. Let's get rid of the sulfuric acid so don't pour it. Now, you get ready to put that in. Hold it down underneath, uh, you know, below the surface. Oh, I don't want you to see that, that label I've got on there. Okay, now put that in there like that. Now, don't touch the tooth. I'm going to pour a secret ingredient there, and you watch what happens to the meter. Look. It's going up. Yes, we have a current. You see what my uh, secret ingredient is? Lemon juice. Lemon juice. Plain lemon juice. Yes, just plain. No, but we're getting almost as much current as we thought with this thing. Yes, and in fact, you see what I have on here? Uh, yes, lemon juice. Uh, lemon juice. Lemon juice. And we're using zinc from an old battery and a piece of copper we're from a hobby shop. Thing. Yeah, we're getting the same thing as we did before. Yeah. But just lemon I got juice. It. I got it made. Yeah, you got it made. So you go ahead, do some experiments at home. What the? Uh, so what's stopping you? Why aren't you going home and doing them? One more thing. What? I don't have this big meter. Oh, that is a problem, isn't it? Most kids don't have a meter like that. Well, I kind of thought maybe that you didn't have a meter like that. So maybe what we ought to do is see if we can't show you how to make one. A meter? Not like this, but one that will react to these kind of materials. So I can show that I do have a meter. These, uh, somebody is criticizing me. These kinds of materials. I said this kinds or these kinds. So let's take uh, the lemon juice and the carbon, or the copper and the, and the zinc over here and see if I can show you how to make a new kind of instrument. How's this doing? The long straw. Oh, it stinks. <laughs> see, look at that chemical right reaction. Have been Notice it stopped? <laughs> I can't see. Well, look out. Don't put your fingers in there. Just you just let it go on. That's strong stuff. Well, see, there's a tray over there on the table. Yeah. You just put that lemon juice down right there, because here are some clips. I'll clip one to the zinc or to the copper, like this, and the other to that battery casing which you've got around the house. Now, if you trace the leads down here, you see over there. There's a compass needle and a couple of uh, coils. Yeah, Looks like electromagnetic. Okay, you take that uh, zinc and put it right down there into the lemon juice. You see what happened? It goes around. Look at that. There's your current. Now, all I have to do is show you how to make one of those. Yeah. Okay, it's quite simple. If you go to the hardware shop or even the dime store, you get one of those. A little buzzer. A little buzzer. There's two coils on it. Electromagnetic. Okay, if you take a file, you can file off those two pins on the back and then and break this off here so that you can get those two little coils. You put them down here and here and put some tape over them. You face these two parts together or these two poles together. See, they're facing in this way and this Light way. Light poles. Light poles. In other words, then you take this, that, that wire that connects the two and you connect it across over here. And the other wire from the end of the coil you put over to one side and the other wire put over here and put over the other side. And then you put a couple of little battery clips on and you're all set. Take a needle, or turn it upside down, cut off a little bit of it so that just the point sticks up. Do it, put it in with a plier so you don't stick mm -hmm. yourself here. Then put a compass needle on top of it. You're in business. You're in business. Yeah. And you now have a galvanometer, it's called. A sensitive magnetic meter that tells when a current flows. Now, try it again. Now, see how it pushed it away that time? Sometimes you'll find that perhaps the, the compass needle is, is magnetized in the same direction as the current flows. So if that's the case, turn the needle around like this and try to get it to stop right like that. Oh, yeah. Then when you plunge it in now, see, it's, it's the same way now. Right. This is opposite pole of that. So you we'll turn it around in that case so that it is up and it's stuck on the line. There. See? Like that. Now when you plunge it in, it'll push away. then it goes around. So you're all set. Now you have a galvanometer. Now, let's say that you don't have any lemon juice. Now, what do you 
Must be something else besides those that gas. There is. Now, when you're finished with these, it's a good idea to wash them off, you see, so that you get rid of that electrolyte. So I've got a little some of water on here. You can put the, uh, the copper and the zinc in. Well, smell of it. Horseradish. Horseradish, yeah. that's right. Now, do you think that should work? I guess so. What, what, is it, uh, does it taste like lemon juice? No, it tastes sour, bitter, though. Sour, though. Okay, well, let's try it. Here's the one side. Here's a, in fact, let's try a different thing this time. Here's a, here's a dry cell just like you would have at home, but I didn't even take, bother to take the insides out. All we have to do is touch the outside to it. Yeah, let's stick it in here like this, and you touch the outside. Touch you know, the bo outside casing. Oh, do I have to turn it Tur around? Now try turning it around. And you have to make sure that the two, the two of them are touching each other. Nothing. Okay, now wait a minute. Hold it. Let me try the other casing. Yeah. Yeah. This is working too. Is this acid? It must have yeah, some kind of acid. Sour. It's probably yeah. acid. Yeah. So there. Now, now turn it around again. Yep. That's the way it was, isn't it? Who was it? Yeah, I think so. I guess you were right in the first place. <laughs> it's shaking back and forth. Now, so uh, with um, zinc, copper, and horseradish sauce, that works. Okay, you can chew a lot of stuff. That works. So did you have that around the house, haven't you? Never run out. How about, um, see what that says on there? Salt solution. Just plain salt water. Saturated salt water. Well, let's try it. I don't didn't know That's that. A, is that an acid? I didn't think so. Yeah. Let's try it. It sure is. It well, now, wait a minute. It sure is what? Well, no. <laughs> Remember before when you said that you needed an acid to make a battery? I said, well, you needed something, a, a liquid oh, that was acid. chemically active. In fact, you don't even need a liquid. You need chemically active materials. So in this case, it's not an acid, but it does react with the metals, and so therefore we get a feeble current. Now it's the wrong way. See? See how? But it's enough to make a good It's enough to make a... Uh, so this is a good measuring It here. certainly is. It's a very good measure. How about anything else? Here, let's try one more. You just to make sure that you don't you get the idea that you don't need an acid. You see what this says? Laundry bleach. Laundry bleach. Yeah. Where's the copper? I'll wash off that salt solution. Try that one. Well, this one really does. Look at that. And that's hardly an acid. It's the opposite of an acid. Therefore, conclusion. Well, that what you need is two different metals. Two different metals. And here was the list that you found. You don't have magnesium, but you do have zinc, iron, and copper. If you don't have any uh, zinc, I think you can try iron. Okay. If you don't have iron, try some other metals. Copper, uh, tin, uh, aluminum. I've tried various kinds of aluminum and found that they're usually alloys, and they probably don't work as well as zinc. The best thing is zinc. If you can't, try some other metals. The one thing that you probably had best stay with it's copper on the one side. That's my low one, yeah. yeah. And that's quite easy to get. If you can't get a uh, uh, copper strip here, to get a piece of copper tubing from, from the uh, hardware store. That will work also. Where's that? Uh, see, this zinc trial. This is copper tubing now, remember from the... Uh, see that? Oh, oh, yeah. So that works also. This is well see, now, what, now you've got the two dissimilar metals. What do you use to, uh, to uh, uh, electrolyze? Not especially an acid. It has to be an Active chemical. Active chemical. Active now, what do you suggest uh, that uh, you're going to use? Um, horseradish, uh, yeah. lemon juice, lemon juice, salt water, salt laundry, water bleach. laundry bleach. And you can try some other things around the house too. Try um, uh, grapefruit juice uh, and various other I guess kinds. You can try anything. And then, what's the third thing that you need? What is that? Oh, a galvanometer. Yes, a galvanometer. And uh, where's that old thing? I want to make sure that you'll be able to to make it. How are you going to make it? The buzzer. Yeah. And. You buy, you fire off the end, mm -hmm. take the two electromagnets, and face there, 
like ends together. Right. You put a coffee cube, you mount it on a pin in the middle. In the middle. And then it up and when you there and away it goes. Yeah. So you're all set. Okay, now there's no problem except that all of the all the batteries we've made here only make that little thing go around. In fact, you hear what's going on over there? That motor is still going around. Why why don't we now make a battery using ordinary things and get this motor to go just like this? Oh, look at this. Here it goes. Oh, that was bubbling over. Let's disconnect this now and see if we can't get this this same motor to go, but this time use everyday materials, not sulfuric acid. Oh, remember that? Here our sauerkraut. Yes, the yeah. sauerkraut. Okay, uh, take a smell of it. Smell oh, sour? Okay, it. let's put it here in this. Why do you suppose I'm putting it here in an old pail? See what it says in the front? It's not an old pail, a new pail. It's the molten zinc. This is zinc. Okay, so we, we got, got one, material. We, we got, got one half. Anyway. We got one half. Now, if you're going to do this at home, get a can of sauerkraut and add about a uh, can of water. And stir it up good so that you get that water all there among the sauerkraut. And now we've got zinc on the one hand. Hmm? Right. What else do we need? We need something else. Uh, oh, it's a metal. Yeah. The, uh, What's the bottom? Copper. copper. Oh, here's... If you go to this same hobby shop, you can buy pieces of uh, copper like this that you can hammer into shapes and make ashtrays and things out of them, and here's a piece of copper. All we have to do is connect the two and uh, see what happens. Here's the motor. Here's the motor. Now, one side of the motor I'm going to connect to the pail. That's from the zinc, right? Mm -hmm. Here's the other side. What are we going to connect that to? The copper. The copper. And now, theoretically, all we have to do is put it down in there, and we'll see if we get a current. I'm going to put it down in here and try to bury it down into the sauerkraut. And, hey, I saw it move a little bit. See if that uh, thing is touching on it. You know, that little... And when you do this at home, make sure... Started, but it's make, well, make sure also that you don't let the copper touch the bottom of the pail, because then it would short out internally. But it started for just a little while, then it stopped. Well, now, do you remember the trouble we had over there with our regular battery? Oh, what happened? we need a... Depolarizer. A depolarizer. Well, let's put a depolarizer in. Do you have any protection for manganese? No. Uh, you well, else? you'd need something else. And the thing that you should probably use... Laundry bleach. You laundry bleach. That, that was the opposite. Well, it, it, it's a, it happens to work quite well. So put in a quarter to a half a cup of laundry bleach. Stir it up a little bit. Mm. Get this out of the way. Stir it up a little bit to get that laundry bleach throughout the thing. Now, watch. Look at it. There it goes. Hey, we're running a motor on sauerkraut. That's right. So you see, I told you that we were not going to use the energy to get to eat it, but we were going to actually run a motor, and here we have. This is a homemade battery made with zinc, copper, and sauerkraut with a little bleach thrown.